Now it's time to up the ante a bit and take on the challenge of a flowerless black forest roulade. This is my take on a traditional black forest torte, which includes chocolate, cherries, and whipped cream. So the first thing I'm getting ready is the chocolate cream. I've got a cup of whipping cream that just came up to a simmer, and I'm pouring that over two ounces of bittersweet chocolate. I'll just whisk this until it's melted. It's almost there. I'll cool this completely to room temperature and then chill it down because I'm going to whip it just like you whip whipped cream. Now for the cherry component. I have a cup of tart pitted cherries that I've been simmering down for 10 minutes to let the juices evaporate and concentrate the flavor. After simmering, I add just a couple tablespoons of sugar. All right, I'll just let that cook down a few minutes and that leaves me with the perfect amount of time to make this flourless chocolate roulade. I'm gonna start with my six egg yolks. This one calls for the most sugar of the three recipes, three quarters of a cup. In place of the flour is Dutch processed cocoa powder, half a cup. I just whisk this to blend. Mm, dense and rich. Now I've got the six egg whites. I'll add that pinch of salt and whip them just like with the other jelly roll cakes until they hold a medium heat. And fold it in so that it lightens up that heavier base batter. Now keep in mind, because this is a more advanced jelly roll sponge cake, because the whites have been whipped without sugar, they deflate faster. So you wanna get it into the jelly roll pan pretty quick. Make sure it's level. This cake bakes at 350, but it takes a little longer. 25 minutes in the oven. And these cherries are perfect. The sugar in the juices have reduced to make a nice little glaze. And the last addition, add a splash of cherry liqueur into the cherries. I can just put this into a bowl, and I'll just set these aside to cool. And then chill it down. This time, I let the sponge cake cool completely in the pan. Because of all the sugar in the sponge cake and the lack of flour, this sponge has such flexibility, you can shape it while it's cooled to room temperature. Now for the chocolate cream and the cherries. So my Kirsch-soaked cherries have cooled down and the chocolate cream is chilled down. And I whip this just like I do whipped cream. Anything with whipping cream should be whipped cold. There we go. Rich and thick and chocolatey. So now I'm ready to assemble. So here's the room temperature sponge cake. And just like the others, still a dusting of icing sugar. Tip out the cake. Peel away the parchment. So now, the chocolate cream goes right on top. Spread that on in an even layer. And now, for the cherries, using a slotted spoon, evenly sprinkle the cherries on top. And now for the folding. Lift and tuck, sort of lift higher up and over. There we go. And these cracks are okay. The joy is we're covering this cake with the whipped cream on the outside. I like to set the mousse for a little bit, just like the lemon mousse we made. So I'll transfer this onto a tray, and I have one already chilled and ready to be frosted. Once chilled, both the cake and the mousse set up so it's easier to frost. And I like to do this on the plate I plan on presenting the roulade. I've got a cup and a quarter of whipped cream, lightly whipped, Spread that on in an even layer. Just this added step of the whipped cream frosting on top takes this to the next level. There we go. And for the finishing touch, chocolate shavings. You can 
can really be proud of something so stunning. Gosh, the chocolate cream, the cherries in there, the whipped cream on top. How absolutely spectacular.